everyone, my name is Sydney and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about all things Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Pretty much help you determine, you know, if this is like the right breed for you or if you've been thinking about it and you're not really sure, you don't know that much information. Just to clarify, this video is for fun and entertainment purposes only. I am no expert nor do I ever ever claim to be. This is just information that I've been learning throughout the process. I have Slater here in the background kind of just hanging out, chilling. So the first thing I want to talk about is the lifestyle. So Cavaliers are very human dependent. They love to be around their humans. They love to be around children. They love to be around other dogs. They're extremely friendly, fun, outgoing, and very, very playful. Little Slater here can just play all day long and never get tired. <laughs> But I guess that's just puppy antics, right? Aggression is extremely uncommon in the breed. It's super rare to encounter a aggressive cavalier. It's just like not a thing. However, I don't recommend this breed to anyone who works a job where they're gonna have to be crated all day or someone who works a nine to five. That reason is because cavaliers are very human dependent and having them locked up in the cage just isn't fair all day. They need that interaction with humans. They need to be around people. They need to play. It's just not fair for them to be crated all day. I definitely recommend this breed to anyone who works remotely, anyone who is a stay-at-home mom or has children, or anyone who works nights because obviously they're gonna be asleep while you're gone at work, so it kind of works out. Me personally, I waited a really long time to get my Cavalier King Charles Spaniel just because, you know, I was going to college and I was modeling a lot and I'm finally at the point in my life where I'm a little bit more settled down and I have all the time in the world to take care of little Slater here. So it just worked out perfectly. The next thing I want to talk about are the colors. Okay, so there are four major colors in the Cavalier breed. There's Blenheim, which is the tan and white. There's Ruby, which is the all over beautiful tan coat tricolor which is the black white and tan and black and tans i heard someone call the black and tans chocolate but i don't think that's like the official name i think you just call them black and tans little slater here is a blenheim i always wanted my first cavalier to be a blenheim the blenheim and the tricolor are definitely more of the popular colors within the breed and the ruby and the black and tans are a little bit more rare. I don't have a favorite color. I think all four colors are beautiful. I plan on getting all four colors one day in life. Next thing I wanna talk about are breeders. Okay, so here's the thing. This breed is unfortunately riddled with so many health issues. I mean, I don't really wanna get into it just because it really upsets me, but they are prone to a lot of health issues and because of that you need to find a reputable breeder who breeds to the standard of the breed therefore i definitely recommend going to the cavalier club of america's website and going to their breeders referral list and pretty much go down the list they're all reputable breeders yeah definitely give one of them a call or check out one of their websites if the breeder you contact doesn't have a litter on the ground they might be able to tell you in the future when they do have a litter on the ground maybe you can go on a wait list or they might even refer you to someone who does have a litter on the ground another thing too you can also join like a cavalier facebook group and just pretty much ask if anyone knows any reputable breeders that they've experienced. Another thing too is that you also want to make sure the breeder that you decide to go with does all the appropriate testing. You want to make sure that they've done testing for the head, the ears, and especially the heart. Cavaliers have extremely sensitive hearts. Um, MVD is super common in the breed. It just, it really upsets me. It's really unfortunate and if you want to learn more about um, the health concerns that are within the breed, definitely Google it and do your research and see if that's something that you are willing to be prepared for. But in the time being, just live in the moment. The next thing I wanna talk about is things to look out for in the breed. So Cavaliers do gain weight very easily. So it's important not to overfeed them and to not give them too many treats because they will put on that weight. You don't want too heavy of a cavalier i think cavaliers weigh between 13 to 18 pounds the reason why i say to look out for the weight is because heart issues are super super common in the breed an overweight cavalier can lead to those issues a lot quicker i'm not fat shaming or anything like that i'm just saying is that you just want them at a healthy weight another thing to look out for too is knots 
so Cavaliers are known. <laughs> what are you doing? You good? Okay, just make sure you're good. So Cavaliers are known for their long, beautiful coats. So it's very important to make sure that you brush them out every day. It's important that you bathe them weekly when they get older, just so that way you don't get any mats or knots. Um, I don't recommend shaving down your Cavaliers like ever because they are known for their beautiful coats. Like they're, it's like a trait. Like why would you want to shave that down? Like it's gorgeous. Show it off, flaunt it. Bryce Slater, do you boo? Another thing too you need to look out for, especially in puppies, they, I think puppies in general do this. I don't even think it's just like a Cavalier thing. They put everything in their mouth. Well, Slater puts everything in his mouth. I, so it's super important that like you have like a clean house, that you vacuum every day, making sure that your yard too doesn't have anything poisonous. It's also really important to puppy proof your backyard to make sure there aren't any like, poisonous mushrooms or like plants or weeds or anything like that that they can pretty much eat up and make them sick. Another thing to know about the breed as well is that they shed a lot. My terrier mix also sheds a lot so it's kind of like double the hair. So you have to be pretty diligent with vacuuming every single day or the hair is just going to pile up and you're going to be buried in it. Another thing too to look out for are the ears. So they're known for their beautiful long ears. They're known for a lot of things. Like I keep saying they're known for this, known for that, but they're known for a lot. So they have beautiful long ears as they get older and because their ears are so long they will trap in moisture and that moisture will lead to ear infections. So it's super important to make sure that you check their ears every day. What I do is that I get a little cotton ball, clean his ears out a little bit. Even if there's nothing really to clean out, I just want him to get used to me pretty much like going in his ears just in case. So the next thing I want to talk about is pet insurance. So I definitely recommend pet insurance if you plan on having one dog because it's definitely worth it in the long run because you're unfortunately, you're going to be having to go to the vet quite a little bit when you have a Cavalier just to make sure that their eyes are okay and to make sure that you know their hearts are okay and neuro and all that good stuff. If you have more than one dog, it can get kind of expensive. Find a reliable company, make sure you look up the reviews, ask around and see what other people use as well. I personally don't have pet insurance just because I have more than one dog. <laughs> Did you guys see that skip? <laughs> I heard there was a company called Embrace that was really good. I'll definitely link that down below. I personally don't have pet insurance just because I have more than one dog and I plan on getting more Cavaliers in the future. So the next thing I want to talk about is training. So I definitely think it's really important that you guys train your dogs. Obviously, if you train your dog, then your dog will listen to you. I definitely think the four most important commands that a dog should learn, and this is just my opinion, is sit, stay, down and leave it. I pretty much learned how to train Slater on YouTube. When I first got Slater, I was training him about 15 minutes three times a day. Now I only train him once a day for about 15 to 20 minutes just because I only have his attention span for so long. Maybe I'll do a video on training, I don't really know. I do training with treats, praise, and toys and Slater definitely picks up the best by doing those three. But his favorite is obviously the treats. You keep hiding behind my back, baby. Don't you want to be in front of the camera, little cutie pie? Face like that, you should always want to be in front of the camera. <laughs> like I stated before, this is just for fun and entertainment purposes only. I'm no expert or do I ever ever claim to be. This is just information that I've been learning in the process of having Slater. He's such a good boy. He's very, well, he's got a lot of attitude. You know, he's a puppy. He has puppy antics. He's very kooky, but there are times he's very sweet. He's very chill. Slater wants to do is play and have attention. He loves attention. He eats it up. He hates to be alone. We definitely need to work on him having a little bit of independence, but he loves loves to be around people. I definitely plan on making more Cavalier King Charles Spaniel videos. If you have any questions about puppies or Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, definitely leave it down below and I'll try my best to answer them. No. So yeah, I guess that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you guys next time. Bye guys.